the statement that it's a remarkable thing we've inherited God. Yes. I don't think we think about that. No. And I think when we think about God, we only think of a person or like the great and powerful Oz. Mm -hmm. We don't think about his life. Yeah. So to inherit God means that you've inherited the fullness of God. All that he is, all that he has, all that he has in himself, his life included, you've inherited that. Yes. The life you've inherited created time, space, and matter. It created the whole universe out of nothing. It's an eternal life. That thing is inside of you. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, if your mind will be filled with that, you find that you care about a lot fewer things. That's right. You, you really would. Yeah. That's not to be indifferent. I can care about things too. This isn't to feel any shame if we do care about things. It's to put the focus on that which possesses the ability to actually satisfy the longing in our heart. The only thing that can satisfy the longing in our heart is to come to the revelation of what it means that we've inherited God. Because we were created to inherit God. And so that's the only thing that can fill us full or satisfy us. And that's what I wish the church would spend more time focusing on. And I mean the church worldwide. Mm -hmm. Talking about that. And that will make you like a little child. Right? Because when you realize that you've inherited God, that your life's been braided together with God in His life, and you start thinking about God's life, would you think God's life can stub a toe? You think God's life can be stolen from? If somebody comes to try to take from God's life, do you think they can take from Him? Do you think that leaves lack there? Do you think God's life can be conquered or overcome by a car accident or a disease or a grave or a... a who knows, whatever else. Do you think God's life can be overcome by those things? No. No. See, what happens is when you start getting a revelation that God's life is your life, you become like a little child. What is a little child busy with? They ain't thinking about their life. They ain't worrying about the next time they eat, the next time they drink, the next time they go to sleep, the next time they get a check, the next time, the next time. They're not worried about any of that, man. They're living in the freaking moment just like, wow. 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 Why? Because their conscience is clean from all the cares and worry and fear that's in the world. And why are they that way? Because they have someone that has taken upon themselves the worry and care of caring yes. for their lives. Amen. When I was a little kid, I didn't have to think about what I was going to eat. Why? Because my mom was not thinking about what I was going to eat. Right. I didn't have to think about if I had clothes or not. Why? Because my dad was thinking about those things. We even say in psychology that if little children are, way, are raised having to care for their own lives, it has devastating effects on their personalities and their growth. Why? Because they weren't created to carry anxiety. We're sending little kids off to kindergarten now, tell them about how the world's going to burn up because of climate change. Right. I'm sorry, but the Bible says that God reconciled the world to himself. Well, guess what? Reconciled the world to his eternal life. Guess what? Climate change can't kill God. <laughs> so neither can it kill the earth. Amen. But we got these little kids filled with fear, right? And so the world comes to fill us with fear. Right. The way it tries to fill us with fear is it comes and says, look how fragile your life is. Yeah. Look at all the things that can happen to your life. Look at all the things people can do to your life. Look at all the things people can take from you. Look at all the things they can say about you. Look at all the things that can hurt you. What are you going to do? Right? And God comes and says, the answer to that is for them to see that I've taken upon myself the burden of preserving and caring for their lives. Yes. And what I've done in taking on that burden is I've braided their life into my life. Mm -hmm. And my life can't die. My life can't be stolen from, taken from. My life can't be corrupted. My life can't end. Right. And when they get a revelation of they, the life they possess, they'll be like little children again. And they'll live with a boldness and a freedom in the earth. Yes. Free from fear, free right. from cares, free from worry. Because they won't be weighing their life in the balance with every single thing that happens. Right. That's how the world lives, guys. But listen, man, the church should not be living there. Right. The church should not be living there. Where we're beggars looking to the world to throw us some scraps, man. Where we're weighing our lives in the balance every day by the good or the bad we see happening. Instead of weighing our life in the balance by the fact that we've inherited God. Now imagine you bring out a scale and you bring out a weight that would try to measure what it means that you've inherited God. 
<laughs> and you put that on one side of the scale. Yeah. Is there anything you think you're going to put on the other side that's even going to make it come up? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> right? Right. And don't get me wrong, man. I'm not discounting that we can have nice things happen for this world or that we, we won't pray or that it isn't good to have it, but we don't judge our lives by those things. Right. Right? And I, I actually think we'll see a lot more stuff happen if we start living like this. Mm -hmm. Right? Where we've inherited God. What does it mean that I've inherited you, God? What does it mean that even as I walk in this world in an earthen vessel, that I have a life in me that's incorruptible? What does it mean that the life that's in me created time, space, and matter? What does it mean that the life that's in me swallowed the darkness and the chaos? that was upon the face of the deep in Genesis. What does it mean that the life that's in me brought forth all life? What does that mean, Lord? Wow. That your life is my life, mm -hmm. right? And see, I think that this, the apostles understood this. It says they were filled with boldness right. to yeah. be witnesses in the earth. Witnesses right. of what? That God conquered death. Right. How did they witness that? They walked around in the power of a life that had overcome the grave, right? Yes. And they declared that. They declared the forgiveness of sin. What's the, the forgiveness of sin? God's conquered death. Mm -hmm. God's divorced you from the death that's in the world. The death that's in the world can no longer harm your life, man. What? <laughs> it's like in Jesus' day when Jesus said, your sin is forgiven you. Those people got healed. I mean, that was a powerful thing to say, your sin is forgiven. And it's like an afterthought in our, in our society, your sin is forgiven. So what, man? What the hell does that mean? <laughs> We don't even know what it means. Yeah. The church doesn't even know what the forgiveness of but sin is. But they believe, right, the sickness was from some whatever sin. Right. Well what, sin. well, what it meant to them was that the, th the corruption that had come upon their life was yeah. sent away from them. Okay. To tell somebody their sin was forgiven, the wages of sin is death. Right. So whatever corruption is manifesting in my life, it's come from sin. Sin brings forth death and corruption. So whatever corruption has come upon my life has come from sin. So to tell somebody their sin is forgiven is to tell them their life is divorced from the corruption that's come upon them. Yeah. What? 